alcohol. Alcohol is a neurotoxin. It's a brain poison. There is no safe dose of this. Now that statement I just said, there is no safe dose of alcohol, the health department in Australia have issued that warning. No safe dose of it. It's a neurotoxin. It should never enter the human body. But what we're looking at now is, the, is causing DNA damage. Children are being born today with holes in, their in the honeycomb shape around the lungs from smoking parents. Children can develop emphysema when they're getting into even their 30s, never having smoked just because of the weakened lungs from their parents. We're getting children born today with fetal alcohol syndrome. This just isn't parents drinking, or the mother, drinking alcohol in pregnancy, though that is dangerous. This is the DNA that both parents have given their children. Do you enjoy a glass of wine with dinner or a beer after a long day? Alcohol is a big part of social life for many people, and most believe that drinking in moderation is completely fine. But is there really a safe amount of alcohol you can drink? When this question comes up, the answer isn't as simple as you might think. Research shows mixed results, and depending on factors like age, genetics, and overall health, the risks can vary. So, do you want to know the truth about alcohol and your health? Stay tuned as we break it all down. Before we jump in, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We've got a Q&A video coming up where we'll be answering your questions. So make sure to leave yours below and stay tuned for that. All right, let's get into today's video. No safe dose of alcohol. Alcohol kills brain cells. It's the universal solvent. And when alcohol goes into the body, the membrane around every cell in the body begins to dissolve. And so very quickly, the liver creates cholesterol. Remember the repairer and the rebuilder, and the cholesterol is sent to hold that cell together. And after uh, 24 hours, the, this, this membrane is now too rigid because the effect of the alcohol isn't as strong as when the person first drank it. So then the cholesterol is sent away. And what's happening to the cholesterol reading on that body? The cholesterol levels are getting higher and higher. You have probably heard stories of this, of a young person having a dare at maybe a party to drink a whole bottle of scotch, and they die. They literally dissolve. The liver can't make the cholesterol quick enough to actually hold them all together. I had a girl doing our program and she said to me, it happened to my brother 18 months ago, he's 25. She said he drank the bottle of scotch at the party on Saturday night and by 10 o'clock the next morning he was dead. Have you heard of how Napoleon, no it wasn't Napoleon, it was Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, he was, he was the last general who conquered all of Europe. Brilliant mind. When he con finally conquered it, he, all his generals, all his armies went into a drunken orgy. And he went from party to party having the Herculean cup, which is quite a lot of alcohol. He died that night at the age of, I think he was 33, from alcohol poisoning. Very sad story. And that night, his two infant sons were murdered and the generals took over. <laughs> Very sad story. Alcohol. How many brilliant minds have been lost because of this? There's no safe dose of that one. Alcohol is a substance that many people include in their daily lives. Its presence in social settings, celebrations and even meals has made it a common part of society. Despite this widespread acceptance, research and clinical evidence have shown that any amount of alcohol consumption carries risk. The body is not designed to fully neutralize alcohol and even moderate intake exposes tissues to harmful compounds that can lead to long-term damage. In everyday conversation, people sometimes say that having one or two drinks is safe. This statement comes from the idea that the body can process a limited amount of alcohol per hour. However, the process by which the body breaks down alcohol creates intermediate chemicals that are not harmless. A closer look at the way alcohol is processed inside the body, 
shows that even small amounts can begin a series of changes that may lead to various health issues. The truth is that there is no level of alcohol consumption that can be considered entirely free of risk. The things that harm the liver the most are the stimulants. So alcohol is one of the most dangerous substances to be taken into the liver and it is alcohol that breaks down to something that's a hundred times more toxic. That's why alcoholics, off, the two organs often that go down with an alcoholic are the brain and the project manager. So headquarters, the brain and the liver, the project manager. So psoriasis of the liver is not uncommon with with alcohol abuse. How alcohol affects the body. When a person drinks alcohol, the first step is its absorption into the bloodstream through the stomach and intestines. The molecule that is consumed is ethanol, a type of alcohol that contains carbon and a reactive hydroxyl group. Once in the bloodstream, ethanol travels to various organs and begins a complex journey of chemical reactions. The body uses a specific enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase to start the breakdown of ethanol. This enzyme converts ethanol into acetaldehyde, a compound that is far more toxic than the original alcohol. The reaction happens quickly, but the problem is that acetaldehyde is a substance that can damage cells. Its presence in the blood, even if only temporary, sets off a chain reaction of harmful effects. The process continues as acetaldehyde is further broken down into acetate by another enzyme. Finally, acetate is converted into carbon dioxide and water, which are harmless byproducts. Despite the fact that the final products are non-harmful, the intermediate steps are the source of many of the risks associated with alcohol consumption. The intermediate chemical, acetaldehyde, is a known carcinogen. Its ability to bind to DNA and proteins creates the potential for mutations and other cellular damage. This stepwise process means that the body is repeatedly exposed to harmful substances whenever alcohol is consumed. The rate at which these enzymes work is relatively fixed for each individual. People with different genetic backgrounds may have variations in the levels of these enzymes, which means that some individuals break down alcohol more slowly or more quickly than others. In some cases, especially among individuals from certain parts of East Asia, the level of these enzymes is lower than average. This results in a buildup of acetaldehyde, making these individuals more likely to experience negative effects even with smaller amounts of alcohol. The process of metabolizing alcohol is also influenced by factors such as body size, the presence of food in the stomach and overall health. A person with a larger body or someone who has eaten a meal before drinking might process alcohol slightly differently compared to someone who is smaller or who has been drinking on an empty stomach. Despite these variations, the fundamental process remains the same. The body cannot fully avoid the production of acetaldehyde and other harmful byproducts during the breakdown of alcohol. Even when alcohol is consumed in what is considered a moderate manner, the temporary presence of acetaldehyde is enough to trigger a cascade of adverse effects. As the body processes the alcohol, tissues in the stomach, liver, brain and other organs are exposed to chemicals that cause damage. This damage can accumulate over time and lead to long-lasting health problems. The way that alcohol interacts with various cells and systems in the body explains why experts are now questioning the concept of a safe level of alcohol consumption. The fact that the body produces a harmful substance as part of the process of breaking down alcohol highlights a crucial point. The danger does not only come from drinking large amounts of alcohol in a single sitting, even smaller amounts, when consumed repeatedly over time, expose the body to these harmful chemicals on a regular basis. This cumulative effect means that occasional drinking might still add up to significant risk over a lifetime. The human body is built to process many different substances, but alcohol is one that always leaves behind a trace of damage. Each time alcohol is ingested, the enzymes that break it down produce byproducts that are toxic to cells. 
the longer the exposure and the more frequently alcohol is consumed, the higher the risk that the damage will lead to health issues such as inflammation, tissue scarring, and even the development of tumors. The underlying processes that occur during alcohol metabolism reveal that there is no threshold below which alcohol is completely safe for the body. Dangers of alcohol consumption. The harm caused by alcohol reaches many parts of the body. It is useful to consider the dangers in specific areas to see how broad the impact can be. Brain effects. Alcohol quickly reaches the brain where it interferes with the communication between nerve cells. The presence of alcohol disrupts the normal balance of neurotransmitters. This disruption causes changes in mood, thinking and coordination. Even small amounts of alcohol can alter brain function temporarily, affecting a person's ability to make decisions and react to situations. Long-term exposure to alcohol can lead to persistent changes in brain chemistry. These changes may result in difficulties with memory, concentration and overall cognitive function. The brain's plasticity can allow some recovery if drinking is stopped but repeated exposure to alcohol can make these impairments worse over time. Liver damage. The liver is responsible for processing most of the alcohol that is consumed. It works continuously to break down ethanol into acetaldehyde and then into less harmful substances. Over time, the persistent work of metabolizing alcohol can overwhelm the liver. Repeated exposure to acetaldehyde, along with the additional strain of processing large amounts of alcohol, can lead to fatty liver disease. In some cases, inflammation of the liver occurs, leading to hepatitis. If this inflammation is not addressed, it may progress to scarring of the liver tissue. The scarring, known as cirrhosis, significantly reduces the liver's ability to function. Once cirrhosis sets in, the damage is largely irreversible. The liver's struggle to clear alcohol and its byproducts becomes a central factor in the risk of liver failure. In severe cases, the loss of liver function can be life-threatening. Stomach and digestive issues. Alcohol does not only affect the liver, it also comes into contact with the lining of the stomach. The stomach's lining is sensitive and is easily irritated by the weakly acidic nature of alcohol. Exposure to alcohol can lead to inflammation of the stomach lining. This inflammation sometimes results in the development of ulcers. Ulcers cause pain and can lead to bleeding if they worsen. The digestive tract is also affected by alcohol in other ways. The enzymes in the stomach and intestines that help to break down food can be disrupted by the presence of alcohol. This disruption may affect the absorption of nutrients and lead to deficiencies over time. The overall health of the digestive system suffers when it is repeatedly exposed to the chemical stress imposed by alcohol. Cancer risk. One of the most concerning dangers of alcohol consumption is its role in increasing the risk of various cancers. The intermediate compound acetaldehyde is classified as a carcinogen. It has the ability to bind to DNA, causing mutations that can lead to cancer. Studies have found that alcohol is linked to cancers of the mouth, throat, esophagus, liver, breast and colon. The pathway that alcohol takes through the body means that organs directly exposed to it, such as the lining of the mouth and stomach, are at particular risk. Even when a person drinks moderately, the occasional spikes in acetaldehyde levels contribute to the cumulative risk of developing cancer. It is important to recognise that the damage to DNA can happen even at low levels of consumption. The body does have repair mechanisms for DNA, but when those systems are overwhelmed, errors can become permanent. The increase in cancer risk is a central reason why many health experts argue that no level of alcohol intake is completely safe. Hormonal imbalances and metabolic issues. The impact of alcohol on the body extends to the hormonal systems. Alcohol can affect the enzymes responsible for hormone production and regulation. One example is the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. In men, even moderate drinking can lead to a reduction in testosterone levels. Over time, this imbalance may affect sperm production and overall reproductive health. 
In women, higher levels of circulating oestrogen have been associated with an increased risk of certain types of breast cancer. In addition to affecting hormones, alcohol can also alter the way the body handles sugars. A disruption in the regulation of insulin and blood sugar can lead to insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a precursor to type 2 diabetes, a condition that has wide-reaching implications for overall health. The changes in hormone levels and metabolism create an environment in which the body is less able to manage stress and recover from other health issues. Cardiovascular problems. The effect of alcohol on the cardiovascular system is complex. When alcohol is first consumed, it causes the blood vessels to widen, which can lead to a temporary drop in blood pressure. This initial response might give the impression that alcohol is beneficial to the heart. However, the long-term effects are much less positive. Continued exposure to alcohol can damage the cells that line the blood vessels. This damage is associated with an increased risk of high blood pressure, irregular heart rhythms and weakened heart muscle. The condition known as atrial fibrillation, an irregular heart rhythm, has been linked to even moderate drinking. The heart's ability to pump blood efficiently diminishes as alcohol-related damage accumulates. Over time, this may lead to heart failure. The risks to cardiovascular health are not limited to people who drink large amounts. Even those who drink moderately are subject to these dangers over a long period. Mental health and sleep disturbances. Many people drink alcohol in an attempt to relieve stress or reduce feelings of anxiety. In the short term, alcohol may produce a calming effect, which encourages its use as a coping mechanism. However, the chemical changes in the brain that occur with alcohol consumption do not lead to lasting relief. Repeated drinking can cause changes in the levels of neurotransmitters that regulate mood. As a result, individuals may find that their levels of anxiety and depression worsen over time. Sleep is another area that suffers when alcohol is present in the body. Although some may believe that a drink before bed helps them relax, alcohol actually disrupts normal sleep patterns. The quality of sleep declines and the restorative phases of sleep are shortened. This lack of quality sleep can have a ripple effect leading to difficulties with concentration, energy levels and overall emotional well-being. The negative impact on mental health and sleep can compound the physical dangers of alcohol, making recovery even more challenging once a pattern of drinking is established. What do you think? Will this change the way you look at alcohol? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more eye-opening content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.